Hello, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and this is the jazzguitarlessons.net vlog. Thank you for watching. This is Blues 12 Keys Part 3 as we got from this book, The Great Barry Galbraith Comping. So what I'll do as usual, I'll let you watch the performance first and then we'll talk about some of the first key elements, a few key elements in the chords and fingerings and whatnot and rhythms, especially this one is kind of scary. Uh, so quick rig rundown before we get going as usual Dunlop Jazz Jazz 3 picks the black ones without the grip uh, My good day Montreal and uh, Roland Jazz Cube 60. So I'll see you after the performance a one two a one two <laughs> Okay, I hope you have enjoyed the performance. Thank you for watching. So now's the time to kind of dissect a little bit of the harder part. Uh, if you've reach, reached this point in the 12, uh, 12 Keys Blues study, and if you've reached this point in the book, especially, I think you're advanced enough to understand what are the key elements. Nevertheless, I'm going to go over a few things. You're gonna see me doing a lot of this because my book is right on my, on my desk right here. So first thing I wanna address is, well, we have an A open string. So we start with a pickup. And then in bar one of the top of page 22, we got like this. It's kind of a tricky one because it's a sharp 11, 13, going down to an A. Uh, we have an A open string, notice that. My favorite part comes immediately after, it's probably one of the hardest part of the entire comping study, is this one starting with the B minor seven. So what we want to hear, da, 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 but it's all, harmonized and it's all upbeats except one chord so so be careful to run this one several times over to really get so we can hear the melody on top so i think this is the hardest part for the key of e which is the first three lines on top of page 22 sorry knob change of pickup here uh, apart from that repeated rhythms um, Typical, typical Galbraith thing. Uh, the rest is pretty simple. Uh, let's go to the chorus that's in the key of A. So starting the fourth line on the page 22. This is where I've got a, f a few private students who kind of stumbled because of the tricky rhythm. So I think it's important to either write the one and two and three and four right on the page or to really listen to what Barry's doing. The chords are, are not that complicated, but the timing is. So it goes like this, three, four, bum. So, you know, it's really, um, I guess, really bluesy, really big band-ish sort of line. So it's really easy to trick ourselves into playing way too early. So make sure you dissect this part. Um, same thing happens in the next four bars. So one, two, three, four. So bar five 
of the course and A you get pa, ti, to da again. Ti, pu, di, da. So you'll notice there's almost a copy paste of rhythm between bars one and two and bars five and six. So check it out. Uh, apart from that, this course is pretty cool. Sorry, we have the last few bars of the course in A, we got this. So we end on an A6, F7, B flat, E flat. So it's a nice little uh, Tad Dameron type of ladybird turnaround um, at the end of the course in the key of A. So next we're going to the key of D. So of course, get this chord down to the key of D. Uh, starts interestingly with uh, the key of D is not that difficult rhythmically, but it's where you start to, to have to pay close attention to what's happening uh, because we're playing simple inversions like this guy. D6, D7, plain cowboy bar, and then G6. Get a lot of passing diminishes, but apart from that, it's just be careful when you're playing on the ends to make sure they're, they're really on the ends and they're really swinging. Um, notice bar eight of that chorus in the key of D, you get a uh, um, how could we say that? It's like a half step. Uh, we get F minor 7 to B flat 7, while where we're headed is E minor 7, A flat uh, A7. So it's like we have what is a 2 5 but half step up uh, right in bar 8. So F minor 9, B flat 13. Your interesting change. It's not first time you listen to it, it's not kind of what you would expect to hear, but it works pretty cool. And for dessert, conclusion, key of G. So this is the hardest one uh, of this round, of this part. Uh, especially if you've been, I guess, playing the 12 courses in a row, then you, you get a one last little hurdle. Uh, my pet peeve is really that G6. Can I say pet peeve? I don't know. I don't know if I, I use the idiom properly. So G6 is going down to a C sharp minor 7 flat 5. There's no there's no other way kind of to address that than to reconfigure your the, the index stays but the three other fingers you have to reconfigure them you have no other choice so that's what's kind of kind of spooky so three four one and they're on two consecutive upbeats so careful with that typically uh, next we have a C minor seven typically I, I would say tell my students hey you know use your second finger on the C on the bass note but this is the one exception, the one time I can tell you guys go like this. And I do the pluck, of course, so I don't strum it. If you strum it, you feel free to add your G note here. Because we have this coming after. Uh, sorry. So this is called B minor 7, sharp 5. Quick observation here. Um, B minor 7, sharp 5 is not a name I like because it doesn't really represent uh, what's happening, I'll tell you this, it's a G chord in first inversion. So the B note, right? So it's a G chord in first inversion and the first inversion G major triad is this in spread. So B, G, D and G again. Point is here, we change that note here and bring it up to an A. So we have this. You could be doing this with a C minor want it. I personally like to do uh, and so that's so two things the G6 to C sharp minor 7 flat 5 is hard and you have to reconfigure your finger so make sure you practice it second bar C minor instead of doing a, a second finger bass like this I do a bar and think of the B minor 7 sharp 5 which sounds so odd to my ears I uh, think about it like a like a first inversion G chord. Think of it like this, okay? But don't play the G root, just this. This is what the chord is actually, but with an added ninth. Uh, apart from that, uh, rhythm can get tricky in the chorus in G, uh, in bars 5 and 6, so where you get that B7 sharp 9 sharp 5, E7 sharp 5 sharp 9, <laughs> Uh, sharp 5 sharp 9, A7 sharp 9 sharp 5, E7 sharp 5 sharp 9, it's it goes like this. Well, actually, I played it in the video, you don't need to hear it again, but it's bars 5 and 6 where you get these two ups in a row and it gets people tricked in a way. You get the A7 and the D7 on two consecutive upbeats, so you get 
It's super bluesy too, like one, two. So think of it like this. So it's just this typical blues line, but the way he harmonizes it is interesting. Uh, last one, I can we can talk about the the last chord. We this is a G six, right? As a very last chord, so you get. But you could also play same chord for your A minor seven. There's no, they don't specify. Or you could play. So remember, G six is uh, is really just a synonymous. It's synonymous with E minor seven. So. So that's it. So we've done it. This, to be honest, guys, this was one of the ones I was scared to record because I don't know. There's a lot of chords. There's a lot of movements, and uh, uh, a lot of things were happening in the other blues and twelve keys, the other keys. But this one, I was uh, a bit reluctant to, to sit down and, and record here. But uh, actually, it went pretty well, I think. So please uh, let me know if you have any questions, feedback, concerns, and ideas. Uh, I will see you soon, of course, on jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher on the website. And you're invited to submit your own performances of these Barry Galbraith studies. So you can grab this book for something. It's on Abersoul Publishing, so you can grab it for, I think it's 10 bucks. So it's, you know, sorry, 15 bucks. Really worth your while. Uh, there's no tabs, there's nothing. It's pure. It's pure juice, so it's just your chords, no tabs, get the accurate rhythms and notations, so it's a really cool little study. I will see you next time and we'll be tackling rhythm change, rhythm changes in the key of B flat in a, sort of a pseudo walking jazz guitar, walking jazz guitar style. So I'll see you next time on the jazzguitarlessons.net vlog. Thank you for watching.